Hi, welcome to Into the Studio. My name is Lori Aldretti. I'm your moderator for this program. This uh, program tonight will be on child abuse prevention. And joining me in the studio is Katie Viegas, who is the Executive Director of the Yolo County Children's Alliance. Hello. Next to her is Yolo County Board of Supervisor Jim, Jim Provenza, and you're also chair of the Yolo County Children's Alliance. Correct. Next to Jim is Alyssa Sykes, who is the Division Manager of the Children's Services for the Department of Employment and uh, Social Services for Yolo County, right? Yes. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you. And, Thank, you. Uh, Thank you. As I said, we're going to talk about child abuse prevention, which is a very serious topic and one that uh, we hope tonight to raise a little bit of awareness about and to uh, help folks at home who want to learn about more resources that might be available to learn about that and learn about what's being done in Yolo County by not only the Children's Alliance but other agencies and, and the county uh, to help families who might need some support and uh, education and tools to help them uh, be better parents and take, be take good care of their children. So starting with you, Katie, could you tell us a little bit about what the Children's Alliance is doing um, and some of your programs that are combating child abuse? Certainly. The Children's Alliance was established by the Board of Supervisors in 2002 as a, um, the Child Abuse Prevention Council, and we are considered the county's nonprofit. So we are super excited to be here talking about child abuse prevention efforts. Um, the, we actually coordinate a few things for Yolo County. We do a countywide Yolo Family Strengthening Network. We um, do Child Abuse Prevention Month activities. And we have child abuse prevention programs through the Children's Alliance. Well, Alyssa, maybe you could tell us a little bit, set the stage for how serious of a problem in Yolo County is child abuse. Well, last year, Yolo County Child Welfare received about 2,000 reports of suspected child abuse or neglect. Of the 2,000 reports, about half were investigated and of those investigated, about 40% were substantiated. So about 20% of the total referrals received were substantiated as children being victims of abuse or neglect. So nearly 400 cases. Correct. In Yellow County. So that's a serious problem. That's a lot of children. It is. So Katie, maybe you could show us a little bit about what happens to you? You brought some dolls. I did. I did. <laughs> so uh, maybe with the dolls, you could demonstrate a couple of the uh, problems that happens with in this particular. What set the this set is up the situation on this yeah, one? Okay. Yes, <laughs> this is our um, doll Valentina that was provided to us by the Davis Rotary, mm -hmm. and it, this is a doll that has a computer chip inside. And it's um, made to assimilate a real life situation. So this doll cries, it wets its pants, it needs changing, it needs soothing. soothing. So this has been used by the Yellow County Courts to um, give a trial run for some parents to see mm -hmm. if they're ready to take on parenting challenges. So this doll can be set to sort of fussy, to really fussy, and we can take this doll and send it home with parents. They can try it out for a weekend and we can get the computer chip out at the end of the weekend and see how the parents have responded to the needs of the baby. So do, the parent doesn't set what the child is gonna behave like then, that's preset. Preset, and pre that's, and the parent knows that this child is, is uh, mm -hmm. it's not a surprise, it's not mm -hmm. anything that they don't understand. It, it's very well explained and account, they're counseled through the process. And this is what a real life baby's gonna behave like. Exactly. So exactly. sometimes it's great, sometimes it's fussy. Exactly, So sometimes it needs feeding, mm -hmm. sometimes it needs its diapers changed. So it's been a great tool for us and it has been used with some parents and it gives the Children's Alliance um, um, home visitors a chance to work with the families on specific needs that they have. So maybe they could work on bonding issues or whatnot. Um, and it's been a valuable tool for the children. How many of these dolls do you have? We have one. These are very yeah. expensive dolls, about $1,500 a piece. So we're super excited to have this and it's worked very well. So is it through your home visiting program or are there Mostly. other ways that parents could or Soon to be parents. Could. Soon to be parents. It's usually ordered by the Yellow County Courts okay. or um, Department of Social Services. Sometimes is recommended that okay. we try this out with parents. So that's a sweet looking little baby. Thank you. <laughs> and nice. then, the other then you doll, got another one. The other doll that we brought. Supervisor, can you hold this baby? Sure. <laughs> it's a little heavy. Um, yes. And these beautiful blankets are made to, for by Project Linus out of Davis. Oh, so yes. just give them some a shout out. 
This baby is a drug-affected baby, so you can tell by the bowed legs and the thin um, arms and legs. But the most interesting thing about this baby is that it has a real cry from a drug-affected baby. So if you listen here. Now, that, that cry sounds a little different. So is that something typical if a baby is born with with drugs in its system? Yes, actually it has a, um, a kind of a rattle to it. You can see mm -hmm. it shaking and trembling and it's pretty much unconsolable. The babies mm. come, can be pretty much unconsolable. So it can make it, it can have a few, huge impact on the stress of the baby and the mm -hmm. stress of the parents. Wow. So, well, thank you. I think people at home can see that that's, that's a sad situation when an, a baby is born with, and I assume it's, it has drugs in its system or the mother, the pregnant woman, was um, addicted to drugs during the pregnancy, and the baby then is affected that way. Do you have any sense of how long, or is it permanent with a, a child that's born like that? It can be permanent. Wow. wow. Well, sometimes so, we'll have um, a foster uh, parents step in where, where a child is, a uh, baby's actually been removed from the home or the, the parents can't care for the child. Mm -hmm. uh, the foster family will step in in that situation and they're uh, people that uh, foster parents particularly trained to take care of this type of infant. And then we have backup uh, from a crisis nursery to provide respite to that uh, parent. So there's a, there's a lot of ways that we could provide assistance uh, to a child that's in this situation. So ongoing support from the county, which would be very important, I would think. It, is, is the child usually removed from the home if no, that's not the first, that's the last resort. Okay. Uh, the first resort is to try to provide assistance to the family, uh, to develop a plan to make sure that the, mm -hmm. that the child is, is, is properly taken care of. And one of the resources we have for uh, families with a, with a child, particularly one who, who, who might be difficult to care for, is the crisis nursery. Mm -hmm. It is a, a, a small home in, in Davis that we can utilize for parents throughout the county where volunteers will come in and uh, take care of the baby for several hours a day uh, with uh, assistance provided to the parent during that time so that uh, the parent can get back in a place where they can care for the child. Uh, and that's know, broader than simply babies who may have uh, drug, drug issues there's also for any family in a crisis, correct, with the family? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the typical family has a support system. I say grandparents, aunt, uncle, that if they're in a crisis, they're, they're experiencing stress, maybe they're sick, maybe somebody's been called to work and there is nobody to take care of the child. In an emergency, uh, some people don't have that support system. There's nobody to call. And that's why we have the crisis nursery because now there is a support mm -hmm. system for our families. Which is one of the many things that are available to help families in Yolo County. But also, Katie, the Children's Alliance is involved in a family strengthening network. network. Can exactly. you talk a little bit about that? So the family strengthening network is a network of nonprofits and county agencies, and we've combined it with our advisory council for the Ch Children's Alliance. And it works on looking at families through a positive lens, basically, and looking at their strengths rather than their weaknesses, which is, a, a, I think, a better way to work with families and knowing that they're the experts. And Alyssa can help me here. The, um, we're trying to integrate, the goal of the Family Strengthening Network is to integrate this positive framework into all agencies working with families. So we're all talking the same language. We're all looking at it at a, a family-focused positive lens rather than... So a lot of coordination with the various groups. And can you exactly. talk about that a little bit? Exactly. And really shared values about mm -hmm. how we work with families and the goals that we're trying to achieve. And so how is the Children's Alliance helping to coordinate or facilitate the coordination then between the various agencies? Well, because we're the Child Abuse Prevention Council, we actually lead this role. But we really work with um, Department of Employment and Social Services, Yolo mm -hmm. County Health Department, First Five Yolo, the libraries, um, and nonprofit leaders, Yolo Family Housing, um, 
everybody that's working with families in the community to try to get them to integrate the five protected factors in their day-to-day -day work with families. And what are the five protective factors? So parental resilience, mm -hmm. social connections, mm -hmm. knowledge of parenting and child development, so you're using age-appropriate interactions with your child, concrete support in times of need, which our family resource centers mm -hmm. are a great example of that, and social and emotional competence of children. Okay, very good. And how is the home visiting program of the Children's Alliance uh, fitting into the family strengthening? Well, it's a great example of family strengthening. Everything that the, the nationally accredited step-by-step um, -step home visiting program does is a great uh, resource for, for parents. They work one-on-one -on -one with parents. So they could work, um, they could start during pregnancy and go up through five years uh, till the first child mm -hmm. is five years old. So it's a great one-on-one -on -one experience. They teach parenting, they do child development, they connect them with social connections whether it be food, housing, clothing, whatever the family needs, those family support workers can help. Great. So it sounds like a lot of coordination going on throughout the county with the various agencies. And uh, maybe, Jim, you could talk a little bit about how the uh, integration of uh, health and mental services and Department of Employment and Social Services, how all of that coming together is is helping families. Well, the, the county is restructuring its uh, social services. Uh, in the past, we, we had silos, we had uh, drug treatment, uh, employment services, uh, child protective services, all the different services uh, in their separate silos. And so if a person was to go in uh, for a particular service, they might be sent across town for something else and then someplace else for a different service. And it, it doesn't work so well. Sometimes the person never gets to the second or third place. Mm -hmm. With a reorganization, we're going to treat the uh, individual holistically. So if you have a, a family or child come in, they would go to the, the family and uh, ch uh, child branch and uh, receive wraparound services. We would look at the individual and decide what services they need and deliver it uh, in, in that one location so that uh, all of the services were coordinated and all the providers would be talking to each other. Sometimes someone comes in uh, with one issue and they have two or three other issues or the issue that's really crucial they haven't even come to talk to you about they've come to talk about something else so this method has been proven to work in other areas and I, and I think when we when we fully implement it we'll be providing much better services and much better case management of of the family unit as a whole because I think like what you just said that um, if they have to do to go to various silos or different departments in different locations for each individual need, some of those needs are not going to be met. Well, absolutely. A absolutely. Managing the case, uh, multidisciplinary teams, uh, and the goal, and we're going to be monitoring these programs towards the goal of making this person's life better. The, the question that the Board of Supervisors and our administrators are going to be asking is, what did you accomplish in the lives uh, of these individuals? In this case, what did you accomplish mm -hmm. in the life of this child? Not how many units of service did you provide? Right, exactly. So I know that the Children's Alliance, Katie, um, a big, big portion of what you do is child abuse prevention. And it's not, when people think of child abuse, they often think of the physical abuse, but there's also the neglect factor. And maybe you could talk a little bit, all of you, about how children are affected by neglect. And then when you're Done with that, I want to talk, you brought a video, so we want to go to that too, but exactly. can you educate people a little bit about what neglect looks like? Well, I, I know that um, neglect is probably one of the most common uh, forms of child abuse in Yolo County, and I know it with, the, with the Family Resource Center network throughout Yolo County, not only with the Children's Alliance, but also with the Center for Families and RISE Incorporated, we have eight family resource centers throughout the county, and we all provide food distribution, we mm -hmm. all help folks get housing, we all help folks get health insurance and CalFresh, so hopefully making low-income families less likely to be in neglectful mm -hmm. situations, so I think that that provides a safety net of services for all families, but I'll let a to say anything that she wants to add into that. No, I think that that's really accurate. And most families do the best they can with what they have. And if we can help them have a stronger infrastructure to really meet the needs of their children, um, that really is the goal. Well, and I think that's a beautiful segue into what we were going to do next, which uh, the Children's Alliance brought a video of the annual community giveaway day that you sponsor and organize in West Sacramento. Can you tell us what we're going to see in the video and then we're going to take a look. 
Well, this is one of my favorite events, and it happens in West Sacramento. I think we're on our eighth annual this year, and it's always the Saturday before Thanksgiving, and it's a, a place where about 400 families, um, in this case from West Sacramento, can get food, clothing, toys, blankets, yeah. uh, jackets, for uh, and household items. Um, for their families. And so it, the, our, our list has been filling up pretty quick and we're usually book solid before we get there, but it's a great place for people to volunteer. It always makes you feel really good about the holidays and how you can make a difference in the lives of families. But I'll, I'll let That's the video great. do the talking. Well, let's take a look at the Owl uh, County Children's Alliance uh, video of their annual community giveaway day. I'm executive director of the Yolo County Children's Alliance. This is our seventh annual community giveaway day in West Sacramento. And it all started with my son Vincent, who adopted a family on West Capitol Avenue and decided that that wasn't enough, that we needed to do more. So it turned into this, and we're really excited. Uh, it's been a blast. Uh, what we do is we help out the families here in West Sacramento. We uh, give them food bags as you can see here, uh, with turkeys in them, and uh, we give away uh, toys and blankets and clothes to about 400 families here in Wasac, and it's just been a great experience. Una hermana mía me dijo que me fuera a apuntar a un lugar allá que está por la Ray, que nosotros no sabíamos, luego es primera vez, nosotros no sabíamos que hacían eventos. I'm a single father with six children, <laughs> so uh, this is a blessing for me that they're doing something in the community for, for everyone, you know, all of us. And, you know, I really need it. I have five years, and every year I come, I take sweaters and the food that they give us helps in the Thanksgiving. Yeah, just a... Average guy, been unemployed for the past two years. You know, a friend of mine told me about this place here and went down and I said, All right. And they gave me a little voucher to come down and get a meal for my family. So. Okay, so you're going to be paired one to one with a family. So they're going to come in, they're going to give you their card, um, and that family is your responsibility. Um, just toys and turkey. Cobijas, juguetes, comida. Toys for for kids. A few things for a little boy. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Bo. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. 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 Thank you. Thank you for the coffee. <laughs> that is such a wonderful video. Thank you so much for bringing it and sharing it. Talk a little bit about during the, the time the video was being shown, 
you mentioned there's wonderful volunteer opportunities at Community Giveaway Day. So can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Anybody wanting to volunteer for the Community Giveaway Day, again, the Saturday before Thanksgiving, always the Saturday before Thanksgiving, we set up on Friday and we distribute everything on Saturday, can contact our office and our webs or through our website, www.yellowkids.org. And we also have a weekly food distribution that folks mm -hmm. can volunteer at. And we take, you know, if kids are off for the summer, we love to have volunteers every Friday and if they in West Sacramento and every other Tuesday in Clarksburg. And that's part of your Family Resource Center program, the food distribution, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. And Jim, maybe you can talk a little bit, speaking of FRCs and the Family Resource Centers, uh, Supervisor, could you talk a little bit about how the county is co-locating with some of the FRCs throughout Yellow County and how that's happening both? Yes, that we, we have done it uh, uh, in, in uh, winters and we plan to uh, expand uh, throughout the county. The resource centers, of course, are where people are used to going to get food on a mm -hmm. weekly basis. Uh, they go and get food there. They go for other services. And some of these people never make it to a county office. They don't come to Woodland. Mm -hmm. They don't come to the branch offices. Uh, if we locate in those centers, we will reach pe people uh, where they are mm -hmm. comfortable and going, and we will be much more effective in delivering the services. And that goes with the overall uh, model of coordinating services because we will be uh, pro providing uh, services to that individual as they walk in the door and coordinating with the resource centers, the, the, pri the, the private nonprofit uh, cooperating with the county and working together towards a mutual goal. I think that's where we would like to get, uh, get to and I think we'll be much more effective. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I know there's a lot of case management services offered at the Family Resource Centers and a lot of parent education, a lot of play group types of things. There are eight Family Resource Centers in Yellow County, is that correct? Yes. And that's spread out everywhere from Knight's Landing to Winters, Esparto, West Sacramento, Clarksburg, right? That's correct. So right here in Davis. There should be a family resource center somewhere close to you if you're, and you can call the county, I would assume, Melissa, if we, if they needed information as to where the family resource centers are located. Absolutely. Or, okay. Or they're also good. on First Five Yolo website. That's true. They are. Very good. Thank you for that. So, Jim, talk about some other models of collaboration that you're familiar with uh, that also support families. Well, the uh, family justice centers, uh, which exist in, in many uh, counties and uh, throughout California and many other states, are a way of uh, focusing services in child abuse and domestic violence cases in one location. Uh, you have the same problem right now when somebody comes in with a child abuse case or a domestic violence case. Uh, they, they, ha they go from office to office for those services at a time they're under extreme stress. They may need a restraining order. They may be going uh, through the uh, criminal court system as a witness. A family justice center brings the, the victim into one location brings all the services to the victim and makes sure that they receive everything they need to correct that situation, whether it be counseling, uh, a contact with law enforcement, help with a civil restraining order, uh, interview teams to talk to the children who may be witnesses or may be uh, suffering as a result of what's happened. Uh, right now, we're looking at, uh, at uh, developing a family justice program in, in Yolo County, and that uh, mm -hmm. issue is going to come before the board. Uh, within the next couple months. Mm. Uh, another model I mentioned, uh, which we do have in Yolo County, is the uh, crisis nursery. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the generosity, really, of uh, people in Davis and throughout Yolo County, uh, most of the funding for that has been raised privately. The county uh, gave some funds. We are also uh, asking the state to begin funding uh, crisis nurseries. There's only a handful in the whole state, and we would like to see that uh, successful model uh, extended throughout the state of California. And the one that we have, in, and we only have one in Yellow County, correct? In Davis, yes. And it's located in Davis. but. Any family throughout the county can Any utilize it? Any family throughout the county can utilize it, and it is right on a YOLO bus line, mm -hmm. so it's very convenient uh, to get to from throughout the county. And then we uh, uh, provide transportation when it's necessary. That, that service is, is probably one of our most effective child abuse prevention mm -hmm. tools. Mm -hmm. 
And Katie, you have some exciting news going on with your home visiting step-by-step -step program, right? We do. You know, I think everybody's aware of the cuts in First Five funding. So our home visiting program that was formerly funded by First Five YOLO is now going to be um, getting state funding. So mm -hmm. it's um, awesome. This is four years in the making, mm -hmm. and we're going to be um, allowed to expand that program by one home visitor serving 100 families. Um, and we are tremendously excited about that. And talk a little bit about what happens in the step-by-step -step program. You shared about the babies, and, and that's part of the program where a family could take the doll baby home for a while and get some practice and taking care of a little, little newborn. And uh, what are the other kind of services that are offered through the step-by-step -step program? Um, well, usually a lot of our, it, it's a bilingual program. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, family support workers that speak Spanish and that's our target population um, with uh, Spanish-speaking families. And the home visitor will go in and meet with the, the mom, usually prenatally, hopefully. Um, they're eligible when they are um, uh, three months before the baby is born and up to five years, like I said. So it's a long-term intensive case management. In the beginning, the visits are pretty frequently, and then they graduate out to different levels throughout the program. But the, the staff are highly trained paraprofessionals that mm -hmm. teach parenting skills, budget skills, child development skills, um, and expectations, and work really individually with what each family needs. So it's a wonderful program. It's nationally accredited. Mm -hmm. It's been in place for almost seven years now, and it's, mm -hmm. it's incredibly successful. The breastfeeding mm -hmm. rates are high. The literacy rates are high. Um, it's a wonderful program. So what other types of information or support do you have for parents? And in the last couple of minutes that we have here, if you could just share... Um, what resources you might have available for parents if they contact the Children's Alliance? Well, like I said, go to our website, mm -hmm. yellowkids.org. But one of the new tools that we have is this parent toolkit, and it's called Talk Plus Play <coughs> Equals Connect. And it's um, age-appropriate suggestions for parents to work with their children, and from activities to, to books to oh, all kinds of ways to bond mm -hmm. and connect. And you can find this on our website, April 1st. So they'll be able to download it from the website. Exactly, Perfect. and age-appropriate. And I'd like okay. to remind everybody else that <clears throat> April 3rd is Wear Blue um, for Child okay. Abuse Prevention Awareness. And um, it, contact our office with any questions that you have. Yes, so April is Child Abuse Prevention Month Yes. every, exactly. year. every year. And so if this is airing past April, um, just know that every year in April uh, there's a huge campaign in Yellow County and around the country uh, to help people become more aware of child abuse prevention and what they can do to help families. Um, so once again, one more time on the website. We're nearing the time to end the show. Um, YoloKids.org. Okay. Or they can call our office directly at 757-5558. Great. And you can watch this program again um, anytime. I think it's video on demand. If you go to uh, dctv.davismedia.org, and you can um, view the program again if you would like to. So I'd like to thank the guests in the studio, Katie Viegas, thank you. Supervisor Jim Provenza, and Alyssa Sykes. Thank, thank you, you so much thank for you. being here. It was very, very informative. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for watching. <laughs>